Good morning to one and all present here. So my topic is on the significance of monoocular pupillary distance in prescribing glasses. So monoocular pupillary distance is the distance between the centers of each pupil to the bridge of the nose, whereas interpupillary distance is the distance between the center of both the pupils. So accurate measurement of MPD ensures proper centration of glasses, which improves visual clarity and reduces eye strain. MPD becomes necessary when a person's eyes are not equally proportioned, wherein one pupil could be a few millimeters away in comparison to the other pupil in the other half. So the nose or the glabella may or may not be centered relative to the sides of the head and the eyes may or may not be equidistant from the center of the glabella. So whether we term them as monocular PDs or half PDs, there are refinement in data gathering that can help supply better performing eyewear to patients. Monocular PDs are important for designing high performance prescription eyewear. So the aim of this study is to measure the monocular pupillary distance and interpupillary distance in patients with refractive errors to analyze its significance while prescribing spectacles. So my study design was a cross-sectional randomized study with a sample size of 500 patients done over a duration of six months at an ophthalmology department in a multi-specialty hospital. The monoocular pupillary distance and the interpupillary distance was measured using a, a pupillometer and evaluated in each patient. And patients who were prescribed glasses with refractive errors were included for this study, whereas patients having other ocular or neurological conditions other than refractive errors were excluded. Monoocular pupillary distance and interpupillary distance was measured in 500 patients. Of the 500 patients, 250 were males and 250 were female glass wearers. Out of the 250, 215 males had the same MPD as IPD, whereas for 35 of them it varied. And out of the 250 female patients examined, 210 had the same MPD as IPD and it varied in 40 females. This approximately accounts for 15% the variation that is of the total population taken into consideration and an average of one millimeter was seen in any one eye, thereby causing a significant change. To conclude, both the parameters are crucial while prescribing glasses to avoid decentration, discomfort, patient dissatisfaction and other asthenopic symptoms. This study, though a small sample size, helps in creating an awareness among ophthalmologists and optometrists. Thank you. Okay, Doctor, good study. You are using a pupillar meter. Yes, sir. So can you, in simple words, can you explain the, with the pupillar meter how we are measuring the MBD? Sir, so in the IPD, you can measure with the pupillar meter. So the MBD, how we are measuring with the, this pupillar meter? So MPD, uh, preferably we measure after, uh, with the centration with the lens, sir, mm -hmm. after, while the frame fitting. So from the center of the frame to the center of the uh, glass lens, we have to measure and give them, sir, the glasses. Uh, uh, so no, but uh, see, you yourself said in your uh, presentation that the center of the nose or the glabella may be different yes, in patients. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how do you decide what you are taking as the center? Because monocular pupillary distance is from the center of the pupil to the center of the nose, nose, nose. isn't it? So in your own statement, you have said that it can differ. So how did you take, how did you decide? Ki what is the center of the nose? We took the glabella point only, ma'am, and we measured, asking the patient to look in the straight gaze, we measured uh, to no, the no, center that of the is okay. That's okay. But Subjective. how did you decide what is the center of the glabella? That's, that's a subjective uh, finding, correct? Yeah. Yes. What point you take, I may take some yeah. different point. See, you are deciding that this particular point is the center. Of the yes, I may not feel it is the center. For me, it might be a little different. But yes, your study is very valid, very valid, because I agree that this makes a lot of sense, you know, measuring the monocular pupillary distance. We often, as ophthalmologists, do not bother about how spectacles are being prescribed. Means we don't tell the patients anything about how they should go and buy the spectacles. We leave that to the optician, yes. not even to the optometrist. We leave it to the optician who can mislead them in a number of ways. Yes, 
especially when it comes to specialty lenses like uh, progressives, you know, and other lenses, uh, glasses of those kind. And another thing I'll tell you, you're very right, that monocular pupillary distance will vary in the two eyes because I have myself noticed that the height of the two eyes is never the same. Yes. You know, when you put the patient on the slit lamp and you go from the right eye to the left eye, invariably I have to either lower or raise mm -hmm. the chin rest, Correct. which means that the two eyes are not located on the same plane same level, yes. in the patient's body. Mm -hmm. So yes. this uh, I noted many times. In fact, I had thought of doing a paper on it also. But after your pa presentation, I think I will now. Okay. But very good presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. good idea. But take it further and your sample size is not small. You have 500 patients. Yes, ma'am, we get a lot of refractive error cases. So, so don't call it a small sample size. See, okay. don't run yourself down. <laughs> People present one and two, so it's okay.